Thank you very much for staying with me on Mirror Now this evening. Our top focus, Congress staged a day-long satyagraha to protest against Rahul Gandhi's disqualification as MP across the country. Now, Congress General Secretary Priyanka Gandhi attacked the BJP, saying that the top leaders of the government insult the supreme sacrifice of the Nehru Gandhi family members and mock the struggle for India's democracy. Now, to talk to us further about this and his reaction as well, I understand I have Pavan Khera, the national uh, spokesperson of the Congress, uh, joining me on the broadcast as well for his inputs. Uh, sir, thank you very much for taking the time out and speaking to us on Mirror Now. My first question, of course, um, to you would be, how do you see Rahul Gandhi's uh, disqualification and what do you think it means for Indian democracy at this point of time? Rahul Gandhi's disqualification cannot seen, be seen in isolation. It has to be seen over a period of starting 7th of February when Rahul Gandhi first uttered the word Gautam Adani in the parliament. His speech, of course, got completely rogered, it got expunged, it got removed from the proceedings of the House, and since then the House hasn't been, hasn't been functioning. They used every single excuse to ensure that Rahul Gandhi is not allowed to enter the House to repeat the name Gautam Adani. On 7th of February, he talks about Gautam Adani. Within 10 days, a defunct case in the Surat court gets activated. We all know the background. The petitioner had gone in for a stay on his own petition. Suddenly it gets speed. And within a month and a half, less than a month and a half, Rahul Gandhi gets convicted. So we know it's a, as I said, cannot be seen in isolation. The prime minister, the government, his entire cabinet, they do not want Rahul Gandhi making them uncomfortable in the parliament by talking about Gautam Adani, by demanding JPC, by questioning the prime minister on his relationship with Gautam Adani. Mr. Khera, as you pointed out, why do you also see a judicial overreach or a government hand in it? If you were to give us your personal opinion on that front. Sorry, I didn't get you. Can you repeat the question? Why do you see a judicial overreach or a government hand in it? How do you read into that? Since, of course, you've been talking about that it cannot be seen in isolation. So your purview about the same. The petitioner is a BJP leader. The petitioner first brings a stay on his own petition. Then goes in after the magistrate is changed. Then he goes in to get the stay vacated. The case is lying defunct. But on 7th February, Rahul Gandhi starts talking about Gautam Adani. Within 10 days, on 17th, the case gets a life, gets a speed. There are four crore pending cases in this country, in the course of this country. Can you imagine the pace, the speed at which this case was handled? Now, you are asking me, why am I talking about the judiciary? I'm not. I'm not like the RSS, the Panch Janya magazine. 48 hours before the Supreme Court was taking up the case of Gautam Adani, carries a page one lead in which they charge the Supreme Court of becoming a tool in the hands of anti-nationals. Now that's something which is which really needs contempt of court. Kiran Rijiju, the law minister, so-called law minister of the country, accuses retired judges of this country as anti-nationals. Where is the case on him? Does he have proof? Why doesn't he file a case? Why doesn't he come out with their names? Will action be taken against the RSS for calling the Supreme Court a tool in the hands of anti-nationals? You know, Mr. Kera, as you make those points, what the BJP says is that they have no role in the conviction and disqualification. In fact, uh, you know, some of them have gone on to state that the Congress has plotted against Rahul Gandhi. So how do you view that? I mean, this happens there. The way Mr. Modi plotted against Lal Krishna Advani doesn't happen in our party, please. For God's sake, ask them to stop talking rubbish. The man who filed this case is from the BJP. He was not named in the speech by Rahul Gandhi in Kolar in April of 2019. He cannot be a complainant as per the set law of defamation. So I'm not saying the government is interfering and influencing the courts, but this particular case cannot be filed 
by a man who's not been named by Rahul Gandhi. Is the BJP trying to defend not just Gautam Adani, but now we realize they are also trying to defend Nirav Modi, Mehul Choksi, Lalit Modi, Vijay Malia, all those people who vanished with the hard-earned money of the of each and each one of us. Are they trying to defend them using these cases? So Rahul Gandhi should apologize for calling Mehul Choksi a chore or for calling Vijay Malia a thief or Nirav Modi a thief or Lalit Modi a thief. For them, these friends are more important than the democracy in this country. You know, Mr. Khera, as we speak about the BJP and what they're stating, what do you think are the short-term and long-term gains for the BJP? And how do you think what's happening right now bodes for the Congress as well? The goal of the BJP and the RSS in the short term, in the medium term, in the long term is ensure silence. They want a silent democracy. They don't want anyone to utter a word. Opposition, media, all the institutions have to be obedient, have to be silent. That's their goal. Our goal is simple. We will not let them succeed in silencing our democracy, in silencing our institutions, in silencing our media, in silencing our opposition. We'll speak. Because if we don't speak, democracy will die. Uh, Mr. Khera, you know, one of the other points being, you know, in your particular case, of course, the Congress did react, um, you know, very quickly. But now what everybody is, of course, questioning is why the Congress did not react as proactively for Rahul's case as they did um, in your case. Okay, I have a counter question. In Rahul's case, suddenly the representation of People's Act was invoked and his membership was taken away. Didn't happen in the case of BJP MPs from Gujarat. Three years sentence, why, why didn't they act with the same alacrity? As far as our legal strategy is concerned, who is the BJP to interfere? Why should they try and influence and interfere in our legal strategy? We have our own legal strategy. We are a political party. We'll fight this on the roads also. We'll fight it politically also. Are they afraid of our political response? Uh, Mr. Khera, before I let you go, my last question would also be with the fact that we have seen um, visuals of the fact that the Satyagraha is, uh, you know, being done at the moment. And in fact, uh, the BJP is questioning on the same as well, asking, what is the Satyagraha against? Is it the court or the parliament? The Satyagraha, and they know it very well, as does the nation, the Satyagraha is against attempts being made by this entire government, starting from the prime minister to the cabinet, to the former ministers, to all the pravaktas and spokespersons of the party, doing just one thing, defending one man called Gautam Adani. Is this why they got elected? We are talking about and we are fighting for 33 crore LIC policyholders, their money. We are fighting for the depositors in banks. Can you imagine the prime minister of the country accompanied with the, uh, this industrialist and the SBI chairperson? influencing the Australian government to get contracts for Mr. Adani, influencing the Sri Lankan government to get contracts for Mr. Adani. And you expect us to be quiet? Of course we'll shout. Of course we'll fight. Of course we'll ask questions and of course we'll demand JPC. Right, Mr. Khera, thank you very much for joining us on uh, Mirror Now and speaking to us. But for the moment, uh, that's all we have time for. I appreciate you once again joining us. Uh, let's also shift our focus to